Do you or your students sometimes struggle in accessing features in technology? My name is Daniel Ball, the IT trainer at the Lee Academy's Trust, and today we're going to be looking at accessibility features on the Chromebook. With the increase in technology, there also comes an increase in access issues for our students. And so one thing I want to look at today is how we can use our Chromebooks to improve accessibility for both students and teachers. So we're going to start off by looking at some of the very simple visual features of accessibility. One of these is the ability to increase our zoom and decrease our zoom in our Chrome browser. You can do this by clicking the control button and the plus button on your device. As you do so, it will begin to zoom and you can see this represented in the toolbar up here. You can also see it with the zoom icon. So if I click on that, you'll see I'm currently zoomed to 150% and with an option then to reduce or increase that zoom again or to reset it so I can reduce it here. Equally, on my keyboard shortcut, I can do that by pressing the control button and the minus. So that takes us up and down um, using the minus and the plus icon. The other one I can do is control and zero and that resets. So that helps us to look at how we can increase um, the zoom on our browser. Another thing we can look at is how we can change the contrast. Now, by pressing the control and the search button and then the H button all together, that changes us into high contrast mode. Now, I'll be honest with you, to me, this looks terrible, but for some people, this can really help them access the page and look at it differently. If I want to turn that back off, I can do control, search, and the H button again, and that turns it off. Just so you where the search button is the button on the left-hand side of the keyboard with a magnifying glass on it. So that's control, search, and H, and that changes the contrast. So if we want to have a deeper dive into some of the accessibility features, we can click on the area in the bottom right-hand corner of our screen, and then go to the cog. And this is where in the settings, we can begin to access the accessibility. Now I do find it a bit ironic that you have to scroll down to the very bottom, click advanced, and then scroll down to the bottom, bottom again. So that's making the accessibility features not very accessible, but here we can see manage accessibility features. So now if we click on manage accessibility features, it will take us into some of these things. So the first thing I can do under the text to speech is click on enable Chrome Vox. What this would do is then read out loud the things I'm clicking on or hovering over. So I'll turn it on and show you. Settings, enable Chrome Vox spoken feedback. Press, enable Chrome Vox spoken feedback. So whatever Press. I'm Chrome hovering Vox over, feedback is ready. so whatever I'm hovering over, it will speak. Obviously, what you can do is change the settings for this in the settings option here. I'm going to turn that off so we can look at some other options we have. So we've got enable select to speak. So this means if I turn that on, then if I go onto my web page, for example, I'm going to go onto this website, select some, some text, and then if I do the search and the S key, Brexit, no visa, but Britons will pay seven euros to travel to EU countries. And that will read the text for me. So that's a bit more manageable than the Chrome Vox um, if you want it to read to you. So let me go back into here and turn that off. As I said, you can change the settings if you click on here to make it slower or faster, the pitch and the volume as well. There are also um, some different languages, so you can choose a different language, and you might have an option for some more languages here. They don't seem to be enabled here, but you can actually purchase additional languages and voices, so there might be something that's more approachable than some generic computer voice. Going further down under our accessibility features into display. Um, we've already talked about high contrast mode and magnifier. We've got enable docked magnifier. If I click on this, it then brings up a magnifier at the top of the screen, which as I move my cursor around, I'm able to see that. So it's just always there docked at the top of the screen. You can adjust the level of that as well. So I could have it very zoomed in there if I wanted to back, turn that off. There are settings on display device settings. My device is locked down though, so I can't change any of those. But we can also go into appearance settings. Now, these are basic things such as wallpaper or browser themes, but the interesting ones are font size, so we can have a default larger font size. 
um, changing the type of font that we've got as well, just so it's more, it might be more accessible for our default. If I go back into our accessibility features, go back down again. And the next thing we're looking at is our keyboard and text input. Um, enable sticky keys because for some people pressing multiple keys at the same time is difficult. So before I was saying for high contrast, you do control and the search key and H. Now that might be difficult for some people to do all three at the same time. Sticky keys means that you can do that sequentially instead. So now if I press control and then the search key and then H key, it turns that on. So I've done that sequentially rather than all at the same time. So if I do that again, you can see it in the top left hand corner, it's highlighting the keys I'm pressing. So control search and then the H key, and that is sticky keys. We can have an on-screen keyboard. Now that if I turn that on, you see this little cursor has appeared down the bottom. I can turn that on and then have my on-screen keyboard. That might be better feature for some people. I can turn that off, see it disappears. I can enable dictation. So again, the icon appears down the bottom. So if I go back into my web page, I can click on my dictation, BBC Sport. Let's turn it off, I can hit enter. And so just instead of typing, you've got this dictation tool. Obviously some of the Google tools do have that built into it already. So we can turn it off, that's disappeared. Now highlight the object with keyboard focus when it changes. If I turn that on, I can go back into my thing here. What that means is if I click on a thing, you see the orange box around it. So I can learn all about Jose Marino is doing, you see the orange box appearing around it. So if I turn that off. The other one you get here is highlight the text carrot when it appears or moves. So I can turn that on. And this is where maybe if I was typing something in here, you can see this blue circle appear to show where I might be typing. Next, we're going to move down to mouse and touchpad. So the first option is automatically click when the mouse cursor stops. So if I turn this on, you can choose the length of time. And as I hover over, you can see the clock going down and then it's turned it on. The thing I've just turned on is to show a larger mouse cursor. You can have that and choose the size you want. Turn that back off. I'm going to turn off my large mouse. The next one is to highlight the mouse cursor when it's moving. So if I turn that on, and as you can see, I've got this red circle now that's following me around the screen. This may help where people might be losing the mouse on their screen. So just an extra highlighting. Here takes you into the more normal mouse settings that you might have, such as the speed of your mouse and the speed of your touchpad as well. And lastly, we're just going to look at audio. The first option is to play the same audio through all speakers. So instead of stereo sound, you've got mono sound, which again may help some. And the second is to play an audio indicator on startup. This means that when your device starts, it will play a sound. Obviously, I can't show you that because I'm recording. So there are all the accessibility features in the Chromebook itself. But what you can also do within the Chrome browser is you can install web extensions. So if you actually go to the, the web store, which is the Chrome web store, you can search for different extensions and apps. So if I click on extensions, imagine I've got um, dyslexia. I can click on this and I can install a Chrome extension that will help me with dyslexia. So that would change the colors and different aspects of the Chrome browser. So obviously, whatever your accessibility need could be, then do have a search for a different Chrome extension that may be able to help you. I do really hope you've enjoyed this video and find these features helpful. And if you do, then please click the like button below. And if you haven't done so yet, then do subscribe.